say they're looking to an example in Camden County just last year where residents uh, blocked a spaceport from being built there through the ballot box. They're hoping that that uh, similar outcome comes from this push after the state Supreme Court upheld a Camden County vote earlier this year. So to put this to a vote, there's a process. Of course, organizers filed a referendum petition with the city clerk's office. They do expect approval in the next week. Then they tell me they will have 60 days to get around 70,000 signatures from Atlanta residents who voted in the last city election. City Council, the very body that voted to approve funding for the Public Safety Training Center, then has 50 days to sign off on that petition and validate the signatures according to those organizers. If successful, the referendum could appear on the ballot as soon as this fall, and people could vote on this measure in November. When we know that they're not representing the people, we know that we have to go over their heads and take it to the people themselves. So we've been preparing this. We're ready for this fight. With the approval vote from City Council yesterday, we do expect construction on the Public Safety Training Center to pick up this summer. That would conflict with the timeline for having this referendum this fall. Organizers opposed to this project say they are looking at legal means, including uh, possibly filing for an injunction to stop construction at all costs. Mm. Protesters have said they will not stop. We'll see what happens next, Joe. Thank you so much. Entrenchment Creek Park in DeKalb County is still closed right now, but we're learning there are plans for renovations. You may remember the park closed to the public in March. It's near the proposed site for that Atlanta Public Safety Training Center. Officials said ongoing protests made it dangerous. We have learned the park's getting $1.8 million in those renovations. The money will help finance new features, including a pavilion, trailhead, remote control airplane runway, and a walking trail. Officials have not given a timeline yet for when the park will reopen. Also happening today, the same health care company that was in charge when a Fulton County inmate was allegedly eaten alive by bed bugs could get its contract extended. Commissioners will vote on it today. The new agreement would add 13 new employees and require Fulton County to pay the full cost of some medications. The most controversial part of this potential deal, rather, is that it grants the county immunity from medical malpractice claims. Commissioners who support it say it will add resources for inmates. Those against it say it's allowing serious problems to continue. We will have a reporter there. As soon as we know more about today's vote, we'll share those details. Taxpayers spend big money, often millions of dollars a year, providing medical care for their county's jail inmates as required by law. And now in DeKalb County, there's a new health care provider for the jail called Armor Health. Armor Health is the same health care provider that other jurisdictions across the country rather have accused of providing inadequate health care at their jails. 11 Lives John Shearick has more on this new agreement. The DeKalb County Sheriff needing life-saving health care for the jail's 1,600 inmates. Sheriff Melody Maddox announcing she's just hired a new health care provider, Armor Health, based in Miami, which has been in the business of providing health care to jails across the country for 17 years. The sheriff saying that Armor will provide comprehensive medical and mental health care for DeKalb County jail inmates. The problem right now... Armor has its critics, including the sheriff of Clark County, John Q. Williams, who convinced Athens... Clark County earlier this year to fire Armour for, he said, providing inadequate health care service at the jail. We try to hold this current company more accountable. Uh, we're getting pushback. And I think that we're going to see a level of service drop in there. Armor Health has been the focus of wrongful death complaints from inmates' families in other states. Right. DeKalb County Sheriff not commenting on those complaints. Clark County Sheriff Williams telling me over the phone that Armor just wasn't the right fit for his jail. And we needed more, and we weren't going to pay more and still get less. And I wouldn't necessarily discourage uh, DeKalb from making a different decision, because uh, I'm sure the Sheriff Maddox did her homework. We just didn't feel like we were getting anywhere near what we we were paying for. We're working to reach Armour for comment as it begins caring for inmates in the DeKalb County Jail. In Atlanta, John Shearick, 11 Alive News. Right now, Pope Francis is in the hospital. The Vatican says he will have surgery on his intestine and remain hospitalized for several days. It comes after the Pope was forced to cancel several work commitments last month while dealing with a fever. He was also hospitalized in March for bronchitis. The 86-year-old is expected to make a full recovery. Lunchtime.
is it lunchtime on the patio, or do you think it's a little too muggy for that today? No, no, no. We just some shade. Okay. Yeah, a little bit of shade. We're I think still in be, that zone. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You get a little bit of breeze. It is muggy on the outside, but not as muggy as where we're going. <laughs> right? We know uh, how it gets around here. But at least today, you get some shade. I think it'll be okay. You're looking at a little dry slot that's pushing into our area right now. We got mostly sunny skies out there, and we'll hold on to this. Uh, I'm looking at least to about two, three o'clock this afternoon. That's when we'll start to notice some of those cumulus clouds begin to develop and the possibility for an isolated shower or two is certainly possible. Temperatures well into the 80s. We started out in the 60s. Hard pressed to get that temperature down to about 69 degrees here in the city. You're up to 84 degrees right now. Got a couple 70s as you can see in the far north Georgia mountains. Canton at 79, 77 up towards Blairsville. Yeah, Clayton, you're at 75 degrees. You are the cool spot for this afternoon. Forecast track model shows again mostly sunny skies, but we'll see some clouds starting to develop once we get past 2 o'clock. Now, an isolated shower or two, certainly not out of the question. It's a low threat for it. I think most of it will be down into the central portions of the state. We watched a little boundary move right on through and now it's through our area and our winds are starting to shift just a little bit and so we'll be fine at least until tonight. That's when more clouds will move back into the area and will bring us a little better shot for the rain tomorrow. But for today, very warm. Some would say even hot with temperatures approaching that 90 degree mark. In fact, we hit 90 yesterday. I think we'll get right back up there again for this afternoon. Stay cool. Popsicle weather is what I like to call it, Cheryl. Please, I'll take two. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Chesley. See you again in a little bit here. Another Metro Atlanta Police Department says it is dealing with understaffing. The Clarkston Police Department worries it could eventually impact response times and keep them from keeping the community safe. 11 Lives' Christy Diaz has the story. One council member presented the amendment to increase police salaries to try and attract more officers, but the council voted not to hear it even after nearly half a dozen officers stood up in the meeting and shared how dangerous it is to be this understaffed. One by one. We barely have enough officers to take care of what we have now. Clarkston police officers made their case. I've been stranded for several minutes at a time by myself fighting for my life. A fully staffed department is 21 officers. Right now, they only have 15. And there's concern that number could go down in the next month. Officer Devin Patterson. Things often happen due to our understaffing and it just becomes an unsafe situation. Councilman Jamie Carroll wanted the council to discuss raising police salaries from 46000 to 55000 dollars to be competitive with surrounding departments, but the council voted not to hear it, leaving officers like Devin Patterson wondering what happens in the meantime. Imagine if you get a big call, like maybe a shooting, an active shooter, and one person showing up because it's understaffed, what's that going to turn into? How many people are going to die before something gets done? Most surrounding law enforcement departments have starting salaries at at least $50,000, which makes it hard for them to compete. But Councilman Carroll says he will try and get police raises on the agenda at the next city council meeting, which is the last Tuesday in June. In Clarkston, Christy Diaz, 11 Alive News. This is not the only department facing these staffing challenges. According to data from Clayton County Police, the department and six county municipal police departments had over 100 vacancies. Other law enforcement agencies across our area, including Atlanta Police, have also dealt with shortages for the last couple of years. Some departments say the shortages are hurting their ability to keep the public safe. There is now new funding in the city of Atlanta to help feed more families. City Council is dedicating $1 million in grants to help improve access to underserved communities. Council member Marcy Collier introduced the legislation. She says the goal is to provide families with healthy, quality foods. The money will give grocers incentives to bring new stores to the southwest area of Atlanta. It will also help create new jobs. A Fulton County neighborhood says they will be loud as the trains blocking their homes until something is finally done. Coming up next, what they're doing to make sure they're no longer overlooked. Breaking news or severe weather near you. Snap it and share it using Near Me on the 11 Live News app. Want to verify if something's true or false? Record your question and send it. Download the 11 Live News app to use Near Me. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. is where you find out what's happening now across Metro Atlanta. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Cobb County where a neighborhood is now. Where you stay a step ahead of severe weather. Our storm risk has now been upgraded to a... And the only place where you can verify fact versus fiction. 11 Alive can verify that claim is false. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. 
where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Fighting social inequality is on all of us. That's why 11 Alive is committed to sharing diverse perspectives, exposing injustice, and finding solutions. Voices for Equality, sponsored by Georgia Power and our other partners. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you see weather happening now across Metro Atlanta. These severe storms are now closing in. We could be talking about damaging winds, hail, and... How you can plan ahead by knowing what's coming overhead. Heavy storms are rolling in. Expect pop-up thunderstorms and rain all day long. And how you'll be weather ready wherever you are. We expect at any moment a tornado warning could be issued. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you'll be prepared and stay safe. 11 Alive Morning News. We began with breaking news this morning. Is where you know what's happening uh, 11, now. 11 Alive is live on the scene. Where you can confidently plan ahead. This severe weather is intensifying. By knowing what's coming overhead. And where Atlanta's traffic expert. We've seen delays almost 30 minutes worth of time. Helps you get there on time. Every time. 11 Alive Morning News. Is where you start the day prepared. Watch weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. If you see breaking news or severe weather near you, snap it and share it using Near Me on the 11 Live News app. Want to verify if something's true or false? Record your question and send it. Download the 11 Live News app to use Near Me. 11 Live News at 11 p.m is where you find out what's happening now across Metro Atlanta. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Cobb County where a neighborhood is now. Where you stay a step ahead of severe weather. Our storm risk has now been upgraded to a... And the only place where you can verify fact versus fiction. Right now, Gwinnett and DeKalb counties are getting some federal resources to help clear stalled trains, but no money for Fulton County, leaving one community feeling like they're not being heard. 11 Alive's Molly Oak takes a look. And Cheryl, that federal help is $3.2 million in grant money, but none of that money will be going to the Hunter Hills community in Fulton County. Residents in the Hunter Hills community say they've been the most vocal about train blockages and don't know why they weren't included. We're still disappointed about what didn't happen. Here's the thing, Gwinnett and DeKalb counties along with Chatham County in South Georgia are preparing to get the money. Fulton County is not. Still confused on with us being so outspoken, with all senators knowing that we have been talking about this since 2021. Um, why there wasn't an effort to proactively say, hey, there is a grant out here. Um, I want you guys to make sure you know about it. The money will go toward different aspects in each county, but overall will address construction alternatives to ease some of the blockage issues. State Rep Misha Maynard says she's been asking for this money for years and was never told about the grant application. I didn't know about the money. Fulton County didn't know about the money. You notify one of my community members about the money and then they in turn said, hey, why is there money and we're not getting any of it? The state rep says she contacted Senator John Ossoff's office. They told her the money was for a grant from last year. And Representative Maynard went on to say that the senator did promise he would help Fulton County secure a grant in the future. She says she hopes the county will get some help by the end of this year. Molly, thank you. 11 Alive has been reporting on this issue for over a year, listening to communities and their concerns. While 37 states have laws limiting how long trains can sit on the tracks, Georgia isn't one of them, even though Georgia has the largest rail network in the southeast. You can watch our investigations right now on 11alive.com slash investigations. So as Chesley mentioned a little earlier today, it's a Good day to grab a popsicle. It's getting hot out there, but we are just getting started. Eventually, the Georgia heat is no joke. So what do you like to do to cool off? We know many people like to grab a nice cool drink, but can drinking something warm actually do a better job? Here's Megan Bragg to verify. Nothing sounds more refreshing than a cold drink on a hot summer day, but there is a claim that drinking warm fluids can actually cool down your body temperature. So is that true? Let's verify. Our source is Dr. James Reed, internal medicine with Novant Health, and a study published in the National Library of Medicine. 
When we took this question straight to Dr. Reed. That's a that's a trick question, Megan. Let me tell you the truth. He says it's a trick question because whether it works or not really depends on the type of climate you're in. So in a very low humid environment, you will go ahead and drink something hot and that will trigger receptors trigger you to sweat. And if you're able to evaporate that sweat, it actually does cool you down. In dry, hot weather, it's true that hot drinks can cool you down. Dr. Reed says that's because hot liquids stimulate receptors in your throat and mouth that trigger sweat, and the evaporation of that sweat is what cools your body down. However, in humid weather, it's a much different story. In a highly humid environment, such as, you know, the east coast of, of the United States, um, probably not going to, to to allow you to evaporate as much sweat as the heat you're taking in. This study backs him up. It shows even if that hot drink triggers perspiration, that won't cool you down unless evaporation takes place. So in very hot, humid weather where your sweat can't evaporate, drinking a hot liquid will not cool your body down. Dr. Reed says when in doubt, opt for a cold drink and get out of the heat, especially if you feel your body is overheating. With your Verify, I'm Megan Bragg. If you see something you'd like us to verify, send us an email or you can text Verify to the number there on your screen, 404-885-7600. Speaking of cooling down, today's National Chocolate Ice Cream Day. Chocolate flavored ice cream has been around for more than 100 years. It is the second most common flavor after vanilla. You know, sometimes it's good to keep it simple. I like vanilla, but maybe put a little cookie dough in there, Chesley. Maybe just a little cookie dough. All right, Chesley helps us get ready for every day with his forecast. That's true for all ages. Here's some proof. Take a look. Yep, and uh, it was a short holiday week, but it felt longer. Yeah, it did. Sometimes there are short weeks. Look, look at that little guy dropping his blocks to go listen in to Chesley's forecast. Then he gets a little closer, a little closer. His mom, Wendy, says there's just something about Chesley that captivates him. Wendy's one of our 11 Alive Morning News insiders. She shared this on our Insider Facebook page. You know, they wake up with Chesley and then they watch a few cartoons and get going for the day. Chesley, I'm so curious, did your own boys respond that way? Your three boys growing up, did they just, you know, lean in every time you had something to tell them? I had to make them do that. You know, <laughs> it's a little more force. It uh, works differently with our own kids. <laughs> What's up with that? Well, I think they get used to our voice. Mm. Pretty soon we sound like the Charlie Brown teacher. Wah, 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 you know, yeah. Absolutely. That's why it takes a village, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he needs me. You know, it takes a village. It oh, takes God. all of us to raise them all up. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, Cheryl. We are looking at, and, and that, you know, that touches the heart. Really, really nice. All right, we are looking at uh, fair skies on the outside, looking pretty good. But a front is buoy or a, a boundary, I should say, is moving through our area uh, and changing our winds up just a little bit. Also bringing in a little bit of more drier air. So our threat for rain this afternoon, not as high as it has been the last couple of days. In fact, yesterday, some of you got some very heavy rain, frequent lightning with some of those thunderstorms that have pushed through. Today, not so much. Perhaps an isolated shower is possible later on this afternoon. That's that's it. Look at this. The temperatures are starting to warm up, though, thanks to the sun. 84 is one of the warm spots. You got Athens, Atlanta at 84. 86 is the warm spot. You got that for Thomaston, not only Thomaston, but George's Rome at 86. Some cooler spots out there like Canton at 79, 77 up in Blairsville and at uh, Clayton at the current tower. But 80s is where we're going to be today. Some spots, some spots will get up to the 90 degree mark. I think some spots will exceed 90 this afternoon. It's going to be very hot for you out there. Again, you're looking at uh, the upper 80s to low 90s. Nine, an eight out of a possible 11 today on the wisometer. The wisometer, the wisometer is how we rate your weather on a scale from one to 11, with 11 being the most perfect day we can have for this time of year. Of course, a one would be the worst <laughs> day, and we haven't had many of those. Uh, not too far away from an 11 today. It's just that heat that may get you and that low chance for rain. Going out to see your Atlanta Braves tonight. Well, uh, if you get out there a little early, maybe get some dinner before the game. The temperatures still around 90 degrees by five. We'll drop down to 86 by the time the game starts, around 720 is first pitch. We'll Drop back down to 84 degrees by 8 o'clock tonight. We got a little better chance for some rain coming in tomorrow. Could be as early as tomorrow morning that we have a few scattered showers around. That front pushes through the area. We'll clear it out for the latter half of the day. And then you can see Friday, Saturday sets us up for a beautiful start to our weekend. It's going to be very nice. Right now, that front is up here to the north. Stationary now. You can see some light showers associated with it. Uh, we'll get in on some of this. In fact, the clouds will increase tonight. And then we'll see those showers as early as tomorrow morning. They'll be with us 
at least through about the afternoon before things begin to clear out. This afternoon, you notice that drier air up there to the north. This light green shade means from the Storm Prediction Center, a general threat for a thunderstorm or two. But I think most of that action will stay further down to the south in the central portions of the state. Here's how it plays out for us. Forecast track model shows fair skies this afternoon. Again, there you go, an isolated shower or two. Nothing to write home about. I don't think much of, much of us will see dry uh, the dry skies for the rest of the afternoon. Here comes those clouds. By tomorrow morning, anywhere from partly to mostly cloudy skies, a lot of the rain will be over toward the east of us. We will see a few scattered showers as they push through. Our model trying to take a lot of that away. Anytime you have a lifting mechanism in the atmosphere, the air rises and you get a chance for some rain. So we'll hold on to it at least through about 1 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. After that, we clear out. It's going to be a nice day for us. Temperatures up to about 82 degrees, so a little bit cooler behind the front as well. we'll Hold on to it for Friday. Zero chance for rain. Low humidity around my pick for the week right there, folks. You'll get temperatures right where they should be for this time of year. 85 degrees will be the high on your Friday. Saturday looks nice as well. Mostly sunny skies. 87 will give it a 10 on the wisometer. And then some of that moisture starts to come back to us late Sunday. Going into Monday, we'll have a 50% chance for rain with 83 for the high to start the work week. Don't go anywhere. We're back right after this. Where you stay a step ahead of severe weather. Our storm risk has now been upgraded to a... And the only place where you can verify fact versus fiction. 11 Alive can verify that claim is false. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. Where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Fighting social inequality is on all of us. That's why 11 Alive is committed to sharing diverse perspectives, exposing injustice, and finding solutions. Voices for Equality, sponsored by Georgia Power and our other partners. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you see weather happening now across Metro Atlanta. These severe storms are now closing in. We could be talking about damaging winds, hail, and... How you can plan ahead by knowing what's coming overhead. Heavy storms are rolling in. Expect pop-up thunderstorms and rain all day long. And how you be weather ready wherever you are. We expect at any moment a tornado warning could be issued. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you'll be prepared and stay safe. 11 Alive Morning News. We began with breaking news this morning. Is where you know what's happening now. 11 Alive is live on the scene. Where you can confidently plan ahead. This severe weather is intensifying. By knowing what's coming overhead. And where Atlanta's traffic expert. We've seen delays almost 30 minutes worth of time. Helps you get there on time. Every time. 11 Alive Morning News. Is where you start the day prepared. Watch weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. If you see breaking news or severe weather near you, snap it and share it using Near Me on the 11 Live News app. Want to verify if something's true or false? Record your question and send it. Download the 11 Live News app to use Near Me. 11 Live News at 11 p.m. is where you find out what's happening now across Metro Atlanta. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Cobb County where a neighborhood is now where you stay a step ahead of severe weather. Our storm risk has now been upgraded to a... And the only place where you can verify fact versus fiction. 11 Alive can verify that claim is false. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. Where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Fighting social inequality is on all of us. That's why 11 Alive is committed to sharing diverse perspectives, exposing injustice, and finding solutions. A Fayette County graduating senior is headed to Harvard. Tito Alofi is a graduate of Stars Mill High School and the valedictorian for the class of 2023. Alofi was the member of a school's debate and math teams, also the state winner of Georgia's Student Teacher Achievement Recognition Program known as STAR. The award celebrates high school seniors with the highest SAT score and who are in the top 10% or top 10 students of their class. Alofi is the first student from 
Fayette County to win the award since it was created in 1959. His talents also carried outside the classroom. He holds the school's record for the high jump, second highest record for triple jump, and he played basketball. He says what he loved was his secret sauce for his success. It was, it was hard, but I think it was fun. I think, uh, I mean, to anyone who may watch this, just like doing what you enjoy in high school makes it a lot easier to like achieve at the highest level. Don't necessarily just do what you think people would like to see you do. Just do what you want to do, but do the best at it that you can. Uh, I think throughout high school, that was most of my, that was generally my goal is just to do what I want to do, but become better at it every day. That's what my parents taught me to do, and it ended up working out. And he knew exactly what his goal was. He only applied to Harvard and Georgia Tech. He's considering a degree in either neuroscience or, or biomedical engineering. That's awesome. Congratulations. Today, a group of Henry County students are 4,000 miles from home on an experience of a lifetime. Just hours ago, they performed in Normandy, France. <laughs> The Dutchtown High School Marching Band was selected to represent Georgia and the United States in D-Day Memorial events in France. The director tells us they've gotten rave reviews from different towns they've been performing in. They even visited some of the most significant historic World War II sites. Take a look at this picture. It's the Dutchtown band members with the, one of the last living members of the Tuskegee Airmen. His name's Daniel Keel. The students say meeting him made a tremendous impact. They got to f perform in Paris today. They'll have a farewell dinner before heading back to Hampton, Georgia tomorrow. Also happening today, the Jurassic World exhibit in Atlanta is expected to reopen. It closed late last month after being broken into and vandalized. We're told everything's been fixed and they're ready to go for the anticipated reopening today. A new push to stop the Atlanta Public Training Center next at 1230, how it could appear on the ballot this November. With breaking news this morning. Is where you know what's happening now. 11 Alive is live on the scene. Where you can confidently plan ahead. The severe weather is intensifying. By knowing what's coming overhead. And where Atlanta's traffic expert. We've seen delays almost 30 minutes worth of Helps you get there on time. Every time. 11 Alive Morning News is where you start the day prepared. Watch weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. If you see breaking news or severe weather near you, snap it and share it using Near Me on the 11 Alive News app. Want to verify if something's true or false? Record your question and send it. Download the 11 Alive News app to use Near Me. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m is where you find out what's happening now across Metro Atlanta. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Cobb County where a neighborhood is now. Where you stay a step ahead of severe weather. Our storm risk has now been upgraded to a... And the only place where you can verify fact versus fiction. 11 Alive can verify that claim is false. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. Where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the stronger storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Fighting social inequality is on all of us. That's why 11 Alive is committed to sharing diverse perspectives, exposing injustice, and finding solutions. Voices for Equality, sponsored by Georgia Power and our other partners. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you see weather happening now across Metro Atlanta. These severe storms are now closing in. We could be talking about damaging winds, hail. And how you can plan ahead by knowing what's coming overhead. Heavy storms are rolling in. Expect pop-up thunderstorms and rain all day long. And how you be weather ready wherever you are. We expect at any moment a tornado warning could be issued. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you'll be prepared and stay safe. 11 Alive Morning News. We began with breaking news this morning. Is where you know what's happening now. 11 Alive is live on the scene. Where you can confidently plan ahead. This severe weather is intensifying. By knowing what's coming overhead. And where Atlanta's traffic expert. We've seen delays almost 30 minutes worth of time. Helps you get there on time. Every time. 11 Alive Morning News. Is where you start the day prepared.
Watch weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. If you see breaking news or severe weather near you, snap it and share it using Near Me on the 11 Live News app. Want to verify if something's true or false? Record your question and send it. Download the 11 Alive News app to use near me. 11 Alive News. Happening today, critics of the proposed Public Safety Training Center want voters to have the final say. They'd hope to stop the Atlanta City Council from moving forward with the plan, but council approved funding on Tuesday. Joe Ripley has more on what is in this latest push to stop construction. Joe? Organizers opposed to the Public Safety Training Center actually just wrapped up a press conference a couple of hours ago. They say they were looking to an example in Camden County, coastal Georgia, just last year where residents actually blocked the building of a spaceport there through the ballot box. The state Supreme Court earlier this year upheld that decision and they're hoping for a similar outcome in this case. So to put this to a vote, organizers filed a referendum petition with the city clerk's office. They expect approval in the next week and then they tell me they will have 60 days to get around 70,000 signatures from Atlanta residents who voted in the last city election. City Council, the very body that voted to approve funding for the Public Safety Training Center, then has 50 days, we're told, to sign off on this petition and validate those signatures. If successful, the referendum could appear on the ballot this fall and people could vote on the measure in November. When we know that they're not representing the people, we know that we have to go over their heads and take it to the people themselves. So we've been preparing this. We're ready for this fight. And with construction set to pick up on the Public Safety Training Center due to City Council's vote approving funding on Tuesday, well, protesters are looking at possibly filing for an injunction and other legal means to stop construction altogether. All right, Joe, thanks for the update. Entrenchment Creek Park in that area in DeKalb County is still closed right now, but we're learning there are plans for renovations. You may remember the park closed to the public in March. It's near the proposed site for the Atlanta Public Safety Training Center. Officials said ongoing protests made it dangerous. We've learned the park is getting $1.8 million for the renovations. The money will help finance new features, including a pavilion, trailhead, remote control airplane runway, and a walking trail. Officials have not given a timeline for when they will reopen the park. Also happening today, the same health care company that was in charge when a Fulton County inmate was allegedly eaten alive by bedbugs could get its contract extended. Commissioners will vote on that today. The new agreement would add 13 new employees and require Fulton County to pay the full cost of some medications. The most controversial part of this potential deal is that it grants the county immunity from medical malpractice claims. Commissioners who support it say it will add resources for inmates. Those against it say it's allowing serious problems to continue. We have a reporter there now. As soon as we learn more about today's vote, We'll share the details with you. Taxpayers spend big money, often millions of dollars a year, providing medical care for their county's jail inmates as required by law. And in DeKalb County, there's a new health care provider for the jail. The provider is Armor Health. It is the same provider other jurisdictions have accused of providing inadequate health care at their jails. 11 Lives John Shirk has more on the new agreement. The DeKalb County Sheriff needing life-saving health care for the jail's 1,600 inmates. Sheriff Melody Maddox announcing she's just hired a new health care provider, Armor Health, based in Miami, which has been in the business of providing health care to jails across the country for 17 years. The sheriff saying that Armor will provide comprehensive medical and mental health care for DeKalb County jail inmates. The problem right now... Armor has its critics, including the sheriff of Clark County, John Q. Williams, who convinced Athens... Clark County earlier this year to fire Armour for, he said, providing inadequate health care service at the jail. We try to hold this current company more accountable. Uh, we're getting pushback. And I think that we're going to see a level of service drop in there. Armor Health has been the focus of wrongful death complaints from inmates, families in other states. DeKalb County Sheriff not commenting on those complaints. Clark County Sheriff Williams telling me over the phone that Armor just wasn't the right fit for his jail. And we needed more and we weren't going to pay more and still get less. And I wouldn't necessarily discourage uh, DeKalb from making a different decision because uh, I'm sure the Sheriff Maddox did her homework. We just didn't feel like we were getting anywhere near what we we were paying for. We're working to reach Armour for comment as it begins caring for inmates in the DeKalb County Jail. In Atlanta, John Shirick, 11 Alive News. 
Right now, Pope Francis is in the hospital. The Vatican says he will have surgery on his intestine and stay in the hospital for several days. It comes after the Pope was forced to cancel a few work commitments last month because he was dealing with a fever. He also went to the hospital in March for bronchitis. He's 86 years old and is expected to make a full recovery. Get a little warm out there today, Chesley. Sure is, Cheryl. We got plenty of sunshine for this afternoon, and we said it would stay that way through early afternoon. Once we get past 2 o'clock, I think that's when we'll start to see some of those cumulus clouds bubbling up on us. And there is the potential for an isolated sprinkle or two. Most of us, if not all of us, will stay dry for, <coughs> excuse me, for this afternoon. Temperature-wise, we're heating right on up. We started out with temperatures in the 60s this morning. Uh, held on to 70 right here in Atlanta. Now we see the temperature up to 84, 86. Another Metro Atlanta Police Department says it is dealing with understaffing. The Clarkson Police Department worries it could eventually impact response times and keeping the community safe. 11 Lives Christy Diaz has the story. One council member presented the amendment to increase police salaries to try and attract more officers, but the council voted not to hear it even after nearly half a dozen officers stood up in the meeting and shared how dangerous it is to be this understaffed. One by one. We barely have enough officers to take care of what we have now. Clarkston police officers made their case. I've been stranded for several minutes at a time by myself fighting for my life. A fully staffed department is 21 officers. Right now, they only have 15, and there's concern that number could go down in the next month. Officer Devin Patterson. Things often happen due to our understaffing, and it just becomes an unsafe situation. Councilman Jamie Carroll wanted the council to discuss raising police salaries from $46,000 to $55,000 to be competitive with surrounding departments, but the council voted not to hear it, leaving officers like Devin Patterson wondering what happens in the meantime. Imagine if you get a big call, like maybe a shooting, an active shooter, and one person showing up because it's understaffed, what's that going to turn into? How many people are going to die before something gets done? Most surrounding law enforcement departments have starting salaries at at least $50,000, which makes it hard for them to compete. But Councilman Carroll says he will try and get police raises on the agenda at the next city council meeting, which is the last Tuesday in June. In Clarkston, Christy Diaz, 11 Alive News. Christy, thank you. Clarkston is one of many departments facing staffing challenges right now. According to data from Clayton County Police, the department and six county municipal police departments had over 100 vacancies. Other law enforcement agencies across our area, including Atlanta Police, have dealt with shortages over the last couple of years. Some departments say the shortages are hurting their ability to keep the public safe. There is now new funding in the city of Atlanta to help feed more families. City Council is dedicating $1 million in grants to help improve access to underserved communities. Council member Marcy Collier introduced the legislation, saying the goal is to provide families with healthy, quality foods. The money will give grocers incentives to bring new stores to southwest Atlanta. It will also help create new jobs. A Fulton County neighborhood says they're going to be as loud as the trains blocking their homes until something is done. Next, what they're doing to make sure they're not overlooked. Live is live on the scene. Where you can confidently plan ahead. This severe weather is intensifying. By knowing what's coming overhead. And where Atlanta's traffic expert. We've seen delays almost 30 minutes worth of time. Helps you get there on time. Every time. 11 Alive Morning News is where you start the day prepared. Watch weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. If you see breaking news or severe weather near you, snap it and share it using Near Me on the 11 Live News app. Want to verify if something's true or false? Record your question and send it. Download the 11 Live News app to use Near Me. 11 Live News at 11 p.m is where you find out what's happening now across Metro Atlanta. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Cobb County where a neighborhood is now. Where you stay a step ahead of severe weather. Our storm risk has now been upgraded to a... And the only place where you can verify fact versus fiction. 11 Alive can verify that claim is false. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. Where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. 
a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the stronger storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Fighting social inequality is on all of us. That's why 11 Alive is committed to sharing diverse perspectives, exposing injustice, and finding solutions. Voices for Equality, sponsored by Georgia Power and our other partners. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you see weather happening now across Metro Atlanta. These severe storms are now closing in. We could be talking about damaging winds, hail, and... How you can plan ahead by knowing what's coming overhead. Heavy storms are rolling in. Expect pop-up thunderstorms and rain all day long. And how you'll be weather ready wherever you are. We expect at any moment a tornado warning could be issued. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you'll be prepared and stay safe. 11 Alive Morning News. We began with breaking news this morning. Is where you know what's happening uh, 11 now. 11 Alive is live on the scene. Where you can confidently plan ahead. This severe weather is intensifying. By knowing what's coming overhead. And where Atlanta's traffic expert. We've seen delays almost 30 minutes worth of time. Helps you get there on time. Every time. 11 Alive Morning News is where you start. Right now, Gwinnett and DeKalb counties are getting some federal resources to help clear stalled trains, but no money for Fulton County, leaving that community feeling like they're not being heard. 11 Lies Molly Oak has a look at why. Molly? And Cheryl, that federal help is $3.2 million in grant money, but none of that money will be going to the Hunter Hills community in Fulton County. Residents in the Hunter Hills community say they've been the most vocal about train blockages and don't know why they weren't included. We're still disappointed about what didn't happen. Here's the thing, Gwinnett and DeKalb counties along with Chatham County in South Georgia are preparing to get the money. Fulton County is not. Still confused on with us being so outspoken with all senators knowing that we have been talking about this since 2021. Um, why there wasn't an effort to proactively say, hey, there is a grant out here. Um, I want you guys to make sure you know about it. The money will go toward different aspects in each county, but overall will address construction alternatives to ease some of the blockage issues. State Rep Misha Maynard says she's been asking for this money for years and was never told about the grant application. I didn't know about the money. Fulton County didn't know about the money. You notify one of my community members about the money and then they in turn said, hey, why is there money and we're not getting any of it? The state rep says she contacted Senator John Ossoff's office. They told her the money was for a grant from last year. And Representative Maynard went on to say that the senator did promise he would help Fulton County secure a grant in the future. She says she hopes the county will get some help by the end of this year. 11 Alive has been reporting on this issue for over a year, listening to communities and their concerns. While 37 states have laws limiting how long trains can sit on the tracks, Georgia isn't one of them, even though Georgia has the largest rail network in the southeast. You can watch our investigations right now on 11alive.com slash investigation. All right, Chesley mentioned it a little bit earlier. It's going to be a hot one today, and we're just getting started. We know many like to cool off with a cold drink, but can drinking something warm actually do a better job? Here's Megan Bragg to verify. Nothing sounds more refreshing than a cold drink on a hot summer day, but there is a claim that drinking warm fluids can actually cool down your body temperature. So is that true? Let's verify. Our source is Dr. James Reed, internal medicine with Novant Health and a study published in the National Library of Medicine. When we took this question straight to Dr. Reed. That's a that's a trick question, Megan. Let me tell you the truth. He says it's a trick question because whether it works or not really depends on the type of climate you're in. So in a very low humid environment, you will go ahead and drink something hot and that will trigger receptors trigger you to sweat. And if you're able to evaporate that sweat, it actually does cool you down. In dry, hot weather, it's true that hot drinks can cool you down. Dr. Reed says that's because hot liquids stimulate receptors in your throat and mouth that trigger sweat, and the evaporation of that sweat is what cools your body down. However, in humid weather, it's a much different story. In a highly humid environment, such as, you know, the east coast of, of the United States, um, 
probably not going to, to, to allow you to evaporate as much sweat as the heat you're taking in. This study backs him up. It shows even if that hot drink triggers perspiration, that won't cool you down unless evaporation takes place. So in very hot, humid weather where your sweat can't evaporate, drinking a hot liquid will not cool your body down. Dr. Reed says when in doubt, opt for a cold drink and get out of the heat, especially if you feel your body is overheating. With your Verified, I'm Megan Bratt. If you see something you'd like us to verify, send us an email or you can send a text. Text the word verify to the number right there on your screen, 404-85-7600. Today happens to be National Chocolate Ice Cream Day. Chocolate flavored ice cream has been around for more than 100 years. It's the second most common flavor after vanilla. All right, are there certain voices that just grab your attention? For one young viewer, it's our friend Chesley McNeil. Take a look. Yep, and uh, it was a short holiday week, but it felt longer, right? Yeah, it did. <laughs> so look at that little guy. He just dropped his blocks and started walking right to the TV as soon as he heard Chesley's voice. His mom, Wendy, says there's just something about Chesley that captivates him. Wendy is one of our 11 Live Morning News insiders. Share the video on our Insider Facebook page. You can be insider, too. Wake up early if you'd like. His mom says that's their routine every morning. You know, Chesley, I love this. It's really sweet that she captured that moment. You know, she told us that she was just getting video of him playing with the blocks and then she just was like, like so like touched when he, he walked over to you. Like you're making an impact in all kinds of ways. Yeah, it, is, it is pretty touching. It is pretty sweet. touching. He's probably looking to say, why is this suit so tight? No. <laughs> Please. <laughs> <laughs> He'd lose weight, Cheryl. Hey, wait, does he have a snack for me? Right, 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 right. I don't know. You know, fatherly voice. I don't yeah. know. But it is a blessing to see that. Yeah. Oh, we love our insiders. Appreciate okay. the video, Wendy. Thanks a lot. Appreciate that, Wendy. We're looking at, um, well, fair skies on the outside. Looks beautiful. It looks beautiful. And uh, we will see some clouds starting to uh, bubble in a little bit once we get into the daytime heating. I'm thinking after about 2 o'clock is when we'll start to see that. And there could be, could be an isolated shower that pops up with it. Now, not as widespread as we saw it yesterday, and I think we'll be a little hard pressed around here. Most of that activity will be down to the south of us for this afternoon. Temperatures are running in the 80s. You got 86 up towards Rome. That's one of the hot spots. Thomas in the other at 86, 84 in Athens, Atlanta the same, 81 in Canton. Even some 70s up here to the far north, Blairsville and Clayton, both at 77 degrees. Look at that. This is the whizometer. It's how we rate your weather on a scale from 1 to 11, with 11 being the most perfect day we can have for this time of year. Eight is close enough to an 11, right? I mean, if it was a four or a three, we wouldn't want that. 89 degrees forecast high temperature above our average this time of year. I think we'll hit the 90 degree mark this afternoon. We did it yesterday and I think we had more clouds in the area yesterday and we hit that 90 degree mark today. Some spots may exceed the 90 degree mark. We'll see those clouds again as we head through the afternoon. Anywhere from partly to mostly sunny skies will be the call. Heading out to uh, Truist tonight to see your Atlanta Braves take on the New York Metropolitans. Well, the game starts at 720. By then, temperatures will be around 86 degrees. If you're going out early, maybe to eat some dinner or just hang out at the ballpark, uh, you know the temperatures will be in the 90s. So I'm going to suggest your short sleeve jersey uh, and have it on for the rest of the game. Only a, a low threat for the rain today. Tomorrow it goes up to a 40% chance now. Uh, we'll be watching a front as it moves into our forecast area. That'll be during the morning. We'll see the clouds increase tonight and then a chance for the showers. I'm going to keep them in the forecast at least through about noon tomorrow. And after that, we'll start to see those clouds break down, get some sunshine back in here before it sets. Much better day on Friday and Saturday, and then that rain chance returns for the latter half of the weekend going into the beginning of next week. Couple features we're watching here on the Southeast Regional uh, Satellite Radar Composite. It shows that rain up here to the north. That's the front I was telling you about that's going to drop into our area and help to cool us off just a little bit. Uh, we're watching that, and then we have a boundary that's uh, just to the south of us now. It was on top of us this morning, now pushed down to the south. I think this will be the trigger for more of those uh, scattered showers than a storm, especially south of that uh, boundary there. You see, we are now switching to winds out of the north and west. Uh, and we'll be watching again. This was drill dry slot that's over us now. We'll start to fill in as those clouds begin to push a little bit further down to the south. You can see the Storm Prediction Center's map kind of shows that up here to the north. Uh, not expecting much. This light green shade means a general threat for thunderstorms. Not much in the way of severe. That has now pushed over toward the east where you can see that level one threat over into South Carolina. Here's how it all plays out for us. Forecast track model. You can follow along 
along with me with the time right here above my big head right there. See, that's what that baby was looking at. Why is his head so big? We're looking at, uh, again, fair skies, uh, an isolated stray shower or two, certainly possible, but more likely down toward the central uh, portions of the state. Those clouds fill in through the overnight. Going to start you off tomorrow morning anywhere from partly to mostly cloudy skies. And we'll have a chance for showers during the morning, and we'll hold on to the threat at least through about noon. After that, we'll clear it out. We're going to get that sunshine, and temperatures will be cooler tomorrow. We're looking at highs only in the low 80s, right around 82 degrees, thanks to the extra clouds that we'll have during the morning and the threat for the showers. 85 for your high on Friday with low humidity and sunshine. That's an 11 live day, folks. It's going to be a nice one. That's my pick for the week right there. We'll have another beautiful day on Saturday. Give it a 10, 87, getting back above our average for this time of year. And then that threat for rain starts to increase late on Sunday. I think much of Sunday should be dry. We'll see the clouds increase late, and then here comes another chance for some rain to be around the area on Monday, 83 for the high temperature, and we'll gradually start to warm it up as we head further into next week. Cheryl? Chesley, thanks a lot. It is the opportunity of a lifetime. Coming up, how these local students represented the Peach State 4,000 miles away. Metro Atlanta. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Cobb County, where a neighborhood is now. Where you stay a step ahead of severe weather. Our storm risk has now been upgraded to a... And the only place where you can verify fact versus fiction. 11 Alive can verify that claim is false. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m where you in the day ready to take on tomorrow. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Fighting social inequality is on all of us. That's why 11 Alive is committed to sharing diverse perspectives, exposing injustice, and finding solutions. Voices for Equality, sponsored by Georgia Power and our other partners. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you see weather happening now across Metro Atlanta. These severe storms are now closing in. We could be talking about damaging winds, hail, and... How you can plan ahead by knowing what's coming overhead. Heavy storms are rolling in. Expect pop-up thunderstorms and rain all day long. And how you'll be weather ready wherever you are. We expect at any moment a tornado warning could be issued. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you'll be prepared and stay safe. 11 Alive Morning News. We began with breaking news this morning. Is where you know what's happening now. A Fayette County graduating senior is headed to Harvard. Tito Alofo is graduating from Stars Mills High School and is the valedictorian for the class of 2023. He's a member of the school's debate and math teams, also the state winner of Georgia's Student Teacher Achievement Recognition Program, known as STAR. The award celebrates high school seniors with the highest SAT score and those who are in the top 10% or top 10 students of their class. Alofi is from the first student from Fayette County to win that award since it was created in 1959. His talents also carried over outside the classroom. He holds the school's record for the high jump, the second highest record for the triple jump, and he played basketball. He says doing what he loved was the secret sauce for his success. It was, it was hard, but I think it was fun. I think, uh, I mean, to anyone who may watch this, just like doing what you enjoy in high school makes it a lot easier to like achieve at the highest level. Don't necessarily just do what you think people would like to see you do. Just do what you want to do, but do the best at it that you can. Uh, I think throughout high school, that was most of my, that was generally my goal is just to do what I want to do, but become better at it every day. That's what my parents taught me to do, and it ended up working out. Uh, his parents have got to be so proud. He only applied to two schools, Harvard and Georgia Tech. He's considering a degree in either neuroscience or biomedical engineering. Congratulations to him. Can't wait to see what happens next. Today, a group of Henry County students are 4,000 miles from home on an experience of a lifetime. They're performing at the Eiffel Tower in Paris today. <laughs> The Dutchtown High School Marching Band started their adventure in Normandy, France for D-Day Memorial events. The director says they've gotten rave reviews from the many different towns they've stopped in along the way. They have visited some of the most significant historic World War II sites as well. Take a look at this picture. This is the 
band members with one of the last living members of the Tuskegee Airmen. His name is Daniel Keel. The students said meeting him made a tremendous impact. They'll head home to Hampton, Georgia tomorrow. We'll be right back. Overhead. And we're Atlanta's traffic expert. We've seen delays almost 30 minutes worth of Helps you get there on time. Every time. 11 Alive Morning News is where you start the day prepared. Watch weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. If you see breaking news or severe weather near you, snap it and share it using Near Me on the 11 Alive News app. Want to verify if something's true or false? Record your question and send it. Download the 11 Alive News app to use Near Me. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m is where you find out what's happening now across Metro Atlanta. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Cobb County where a neighborhood is now. Where you stay a step ahead of severe weather. Our storm risk has now been upgraded to a... And the only place where you can verify fact versus fiction. 11 Alive can verify that claim is false. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. Where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Fighting social inequality is on all of us. That's why 11 Alive is committed to sharing diverse perspectives, exposing injustice, and finding solutions. Voices for Equality, sponsored by Georgia Power and our other partners. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you see weather happening now across Metro Atlanta. These severe storms are now closing in. We could be talking about damaging winds, hail, and how you can. The Jurassic World exhibit in Atlanta is back open. Vandals broke into the exhibit closed it late last month because of all the damage. Everything has now been fixed. They're ready to go. Doors reopened this morning. Tickets are now available online. Chesley. Sure, it's going to be a hot one today with temperatures approaching that 90 degree mark. I think we'll get right up there tomorrow. A bit cooler behind a front is going to push through 82 degrees will be a high Friday. My pick for the week an 11 out of an 11 on the lithometer. 85 degrees is right where we should be for this time of year with low humidity. It's going to feel pretty nice. Saturday will be nice as well. Late Sunday, the rain comes back to us. At least the threat, the moisture comes back with the threat for rain on Monday morning. 83 degrees will be your afternoon high An 11 alive day on a Friday. Perfection. That's great. All right. A lot of stories we're following for you right now on 11alive.com. Developing stories we'll keep updating online and on the 11 Alive app. We'll see you back here for 11 Alive News at 5. Thanks for watching 11 Alive at noon. We hope you enjoy the day. Have a good one. Fault. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m., where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Fighting social inequality is on all of us. That's why 11 Alive is committed to sharing diverse perspectives, exposing injustice, and finding solutions. Voices for Equality, sponsored by Georgia Power and our other partners. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you see weather happening now across Metro Atlanta. These severe storms are now closing in. We could be talking about damaging winds, hail, and... How you can plan ahead by knowing what's coming overhead. Heavy storms are rolling in. Expect pop-up thunderstorms and rain all day long. And how you be weather ready wherever you are. We expect at any moment a tornado warning could be issued. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you'll be prepared and stay safe. 11 Alive Morning News. We began with breaking news this morning. Is where you know what's happening now. 11 Alive is live on the scene. Where you can confidently plan ahead. This severe weather is intensifying. By knowing what's coming overhead. And we're Atlanta's traffic expert. We've seen delays almost 30 minutes worth of time. Helps you get there on time. Every time. 11 Alive Morning News. 
is where you start the day prepared. Watch weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. If you see breaking news or severe weather near you, snap it and share it using Near Me on the 11 Live News app. Want to verify if something's true or false? Record your question and send it. Download the 11 Alive News app to use near me. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. is where you find out what's happening now across Metro Atlanta. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Cobb County where a neighborhood is now. Where you stay a step ahead of severe weather. Our storm risk has now been upgraded to a... And the only place where you can verify fact versus fiction. 11 Alive can verify that claim is false. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. Where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center 